Hello there guys, it's Jake Peregrine 4 here with a bit of a um, project I've undertaken. Um, and this project was sparked by uh, Ryan, who he mentioned wanting to take the idea of an auto furnace and making it significantly more large scale. So auto furnaces are great because you give it a bunch of coal, you can have it hopper fed off to the side like this. You can even put a chest on top of those hoppers and really have it go for a long time. Um, including, you know, extending both the input and the output even further. The problem is, is that with the way that hoppers work, there's not really a convenient way to make this larger in terms of giving it more furnaces to work through. Um, so without having to manually put stuff into several different auto furnaces, you can't really get a huge smelting job done extremely quickly. Uh, and sort of the best that you're, the best that you have to work with is something like this. Um, and Ryan's objective was to essentially make it so in the time it takes for a single furnace to smelt a stack of items um, to have done that 54 times with the end user only having to fill up one double chest full of stuff and then as soon as they've done that it starts and you're done in a matter of minutes rather than half an hour, an hour, whatever it takes to do it manually. Um, and this idea intrigued me because I've done large auto smelting setups before and they're really not convenient to make at all um, for a number of various reasons um, because if you take an idea like this and just expand it um, without any sort of redstone control um, it, it becomes very manual in terms of how you distribute um, your items here and you can see that in the time that we've been sitting here this is actually relatively slow um, so um, I decided to do my own take on this idea. Now, initially, when doing this project, um, I th had, uh, this was my original design. So this has 54 furnaces, um, and you put the items that you want smelted in here. Uh, I don't have an output, but you put a hopper and a chest down here for the output. And then over here is your coal reservoir. Uh, and you have minecarts circling this whole assembly. Uh, the downside of this is that, unfortunately, um, there is an enormous buffer of wasted space. So essentially, if you fill this up with items, uh, such as our gold here, what you'll notice very quickly I actually need a, a minecart with furnace to demonstrate this not a minecart with furnace, a minecart with hopper um, what you'll notice is that essentially all of the items that you're going to get for a good long while are only going to go into the first few uh, furnaces, so up to here. So we'll get one, two, three, four, five, six. The first six will get gold. And it's not until you completely fill this furnace, this hopper, and this hopper completely up with whatever you're trying to smelt before it will move on and give any of what you're trying to smelt to a later block um, to where it very rapidly becomes inefficient. Um, so rather than have it work based off of uh, each furnace handling one stack, you have each furnace handling 11 stacks because you've got five from, oops, You've got five from the first hopper, five from the second, and then one in the actual furnace itself. So very quickly, this is a very flawed idea. 
and that issue is exacerbated um, actually by the coal more than anything uh, because the coal fill up will be extremely biased again this time with only six blocks but if you're trying to get coal through 54 furnaces and 54 furnaces ends up being um, six times that because each furnace has a reservoir for one plus five um, you have just an absolutely ridiculous amount of coal that you have to fuel this thing with just to get it up and running once um, and then you're completely out of coal I mean you need six double chests of coal blocks to get this started um, so I very quickly realized that um, you need some sort of redstone control uh, to handle this. Now, um, this is actually the final result. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, in the middle result. I'm curious if we have any leakage. It doesn't look like it, um, which is very good. Um, and I really did not intend for it to be nearly this complicated. Uh, but as far as I can tell, at least, um, this is as complicated as it needs to be. Um, this has 18 furnaces um, and is tileable. So if you want it to have the full 54, each one of these three block wide segments, you could just duplicate over and over um, until you had 27 segments. Um, I don't really have it designed to where you could you know, take two of these and link them together. Um, really the only good way of extending this is lengthwise. Um, but uh, I, I'm a big fan of minecart logic systems and that's exactly what this is. Um, so basically um, my thought was, and you can even see that reflected here, is you've got three rails, three independent rails. Uh, the top rail is for distributing items between the furnaces. The second rail is for distributing coal between the furnaces. And the last rail is for retrieving the items from the furnaces and returning them up to the chest. And you can see that reflected here. This bottom rail takes items, dumps them back up into this top chest. The rail in the middle, this one here, uh, handles coal distribution, and the one on the top handles um, taking items from this chest and distributing them among the furnaces. Um, now, for getting rid of the issue where it takes a huge amount of coal to charge this thing up, um, what I did is these here are the hoppers that feed coal into this. Um, and uh, effectively what's happening here is it's feeding into here. Once this is full, coal starts backlogging into this. This comparator lights up, activates this line, um, activates this, and well, currently this hopper's off because there's actually items in here. So when this is powered, items can't flow. Now, given a pulse from this uh, check line, like you just saw, um, it gives it an opportunity to begin putting items into the hopper again. Um, and you can see how easy that works. Um, however, this reset line is absolutely necessary. I could have individual clocks handling each one, but I found it much easier just to do it this way. Um, so this handles making sure that you don't get an uneven distribution of coal. So you can see that this item hopper has an overflow of six. This one has an overflow of six. This has an overflow of seven. There is still a little bit of variance, but as far as I know, that can't be up. I don't know why that's there. I don't know how many that's there for. Uh, this has gone through a lot of various revisions. Um, this thing has been a pain. Um, however, I do think I have it worked out. Um, 
Now, this was easy to do because since coal feeds in from the side, I had easy access to put a torch underneath it. However, for the distributing items into the top of the furnace, I don't have that luxury because there's a furnace underneath the hopper. Um, so I did a similar-ish system where I've got this comparator feeding out, powering this block, uh, inverting this torch, inverting this torch, going to this line, and then this will power this block when this starts to overflow, which you can see is not the case. This comparator is not lit up. This isn't lit up. Uh, and just like with the coal input, we have a reset line here set up, uh, which this is the only convenient way that I found to handle a reset line without making this whole thing significantly larger, lengthwise at least. So. Uh, it is a bit more expensive because it does require two pistons. Um, because when um, when you have a bunch of redstone flashing here, you can get some of these pistons being stuck um, and requiring a uh, bug update, um, which is what the second piston is for. Because this one's directly powered, um, it doesn't get stuck in the same way that these can. Um, and these are also just a, a manual check, but. Uh, they don't do anything right now because this actually, I don't have any items coursing through here. Um, uh, but uh, nonetheless, um, before I get on to any more explanation, I'm actually going to get this thing started. So once it's started, you don't actually have to turn it off. Uh, and this thing can just run forever, even if you don't have items running through it. Um, but we will go ahead... And I think I'll put three of these in. I think three is what I found to be the about the right number. Um, so this thing actually is fairly sensitive to the number of uh, minecarts that you have coursing through it. Uh, so I found that the line for coal needs the fewest. I only have two running through here, um, which you can see right here. Both of them are what I'm following. So this handle coal distribution. The most important line by far is the item return line, which I believe I have six running through, because if these start backlogging, stuff will start to break. So immediately you can see that we're getting some stone in here. Already 14 and I just started it. Uh, I'm gonna let this go for a moment and continue explaining this just a, just a little bit more. Um, so what is there? Oh, so I'm just using a, a fairly basic hopper, hopper clock up here um, to regulate this and a separate hopper clock to regulate uh, checks for the coal. Now because every one coal cooks eight cobblestone or eight of whatever you're trying to cook, um, that is why uh, this is ticking significantly less frequently than this just because I don't need this clock to run as quickly and these will fill up much faster unintentionally um, sorry about the call here, I didn't make sure to clear some stuff out of it, I don't believe those are new um, those are from earlier tests but um, I've had to do a ton of tinkering with various timings and the, like, the exact order of operations for stuff. Like I've had to adjust the paths to make sure stuff didn't get mixed up because uh, hopper minecarts in particular are really good at picking stuff out of other hopper minecarts when they're not supposed to, especially when they're going relatively fast. Um, so I just had to make sure there was a lot of isolation. Um, and uh, a matter of fact, the coal line... Um, says that... Oh, that's... Uh, let me see if I can. These actually need to uh, pretty much stay full. Um, if there are any open slots, because of how close these lines are together, it'll pick up whatever you're trying to smelt. So assuming you have uh, a decent amount of coal um, backed up in here, it should be fine. Um, but yeah, so what you'll see is over this time we've almost smelted two stacks. Um, 
so we're almost at two stacks there um, and we'll just do a uh, speed comparison we're going to throw four stacks into here um, and I guess I'll go ahead and take that out so pretty much what we'll do here is a comparison to see which of these two is faster. So, so far from here, which got started earlier, we've got four stone. From this one, we're up to 14. And I don't know if it's up to full speed yet. So yeah, this is not actually up to full speed yet. Um, because what it has to do is fill up, oh wow, this is actually only at about a third speed at this point. It, it does take a little bit of time for the items to actually distribute through here. Um, because it will still fill, um, I believe, these six, seven, these seven furnaces first with items before it will give any furnaces after that anymore. So it actually should start doing that soon. Uh, in the next couple of moments, we should see um, more of these furnaces start to light up, which is definitely good. And actually, I think we'll be able to see these start to light up. So the ones that hold, that stay on here, that means that um, they are full. And which is what you saw with the coal. Um, is you'll see that uh, most of these are full on coal. So these comparators are on. And if you see any of these comparators off, it means that uh, it consumed a piece of coal and is refilling, which I imagine we'll see all at once. Each one consume some coal, or at least a, a segment. Um, so we may or may not actually see this. Um, but you can see how these are lighting up. And I do believe we are going to have more. Yep. So now we have more furnaces lit up and operating. Um, so once these fill up entirely, then we'll see these last few light up and start operating as well. Um, so again, there is a bit of a warm-up time, um, but right now we've got two, a little over two stacks. And this one, we're not even at half a stack yet. So this one, which isn't entirely warmed up yet, just got to its second phase of warming up, is already several times faster, it's four times faster, um, at about a third of the speed uh, for scale, which, you know, does make sense since this one does have 18 furnaces and this has two. Um, you would imagine it would be nine times faster, which once this thing's up to speed, it should be. Um, however, this is a significantly more complicated beast by far. Um, and given slight modifications to up here, you could very easily increase the amount that you can throw in to smelt and the amount that it can output. Um, it would not by any means be difficult. Um, you would just have to adjust this top unit a bit. In terms of the coal, um, I suppose you could increase this capacity as well. Just put a hopper um, and more chests on top of that. But um, I mean, already this is six stacks of coal blocks, and that's not even counting um, what's in the hoppers or in the furnaces themselves. Uh, but anyway, um, I should have um, a schematic of this available if you uh, want to check it out and dissect it, because honestly, a build guide for this thing is just not practical. The best way is to just take it and poke around with it yourself. Um, but as far as I know, this is the best way to do this. It is unfortunately very expensive um, to set up. I mean, each tile takes 
four hoppers and a not insignificant amount of redstone. I'm counting uh, one tile as both the left and right sides of it. Uh, and that's not counting mine carts and pistons and just so much. So I think at this point, let's see. Uh, it is taking a little bit longer for this part to get warmed up. Um, but it will do it over time. I mean, we saw the second segment get warm, uh, get going. Um, I do believe if I were to add more fern, uh, more hopper minecarts to this top rail, that would happen faster. Um, although I found that getting these minecarts backlogged because there's too many of them um, can lead to other various issues in terms of jamming, um, which is not ideal. I probably could still sneak another one on. We'll actually see if I can do that real quick. Um, so I'm going to wait for a gap to uh, put this on in between. Now, there we go. So, should start happening a little bit faster now. Um, but it's still definitely a, le a lengthy process. Um, but, uh, yeah, tell me what you think. Tell me if you have any recommendations on ways to make this more efficient. Um, I would love to see this improved. Okay, so you can see that just by adding another uh, minecart, we're already getting more items distributed through here. Um, so immediate improvements there. Uh, but, uh, well, thank you for watching. Um, I might have a follow-up to this. Um, not sure. But my favorite part is definitely watching these flicker. Anyway, thank you guys. And I'll talk to you next time.